All right, guys, this is Coded Steel, and welcome to another App Inventor tutorial. This one is going to be on date pickers. So, if you could do me a favor and ignore the fact that this says accelerometer up here, that would be very great. Um, what this is essentially going to do is I got a request from somebody on my, the previous video on list pickers, and hopefully, I'm interpreting their request correctly. But what they asked was, um, how do you make a date picker where you can turn around and choose uh, choose a date and then if you go back and you try to choose another date you can't pick a date that's less than the date you already chosen so essentially if I said alright I'm gonna pick today's date March 12th 2015 I'm gonna lock that in there uh, now if I try to reopen the date picker it will not let me pick uh, March 12th 2015 or any date less than that again but um, we could also modify it to where yes they can pick the same date again um, we will I'll show you how we do that in just a second you can make it both ways but hopefully I'm interpreting this person's question correctly um, if not that is my interpretation of what you did post so that's what where this video is going to be about so the keys to making something like this happen are uh, just to go ahead and first we need to grab and drag this date picker in here and then we need to drag the label I drag a label in here I clear the label out so it displays nothing and then I drag the notifier element in here nothing really to it and then I turned and, and named the pick date the, the, the pick date whatever all right that's easy enough we've done this a million times laid out an app page it's not really that difficult at this point in the series hopefully um, what is going to be difficult probably will be the logic that is going to drive this machine as it always is obviously the logic is is sometimes rather involved with what it is that we do decide to do for a video but i think you guys will be able to follow it so what we've got to do here is first of all we got to understand this when you first start the app up um, the date picker element is going to be uh, you're going to select a date but the year the day and the month are all going to be zero by default so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it to where you can lock in a day the first time you come in here so um, how I have it set is I go ahead and I say uh, you're stuck you have to pick a day that is um, in all of these categories and you have to pick a day that um, or sorry, you have to pick a, a day or a month or a year, and you can pick any day, month or year, anywhere before 2000, and you know, or any 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 sorry, any date before whatever. You can pick any date back to like the 70s or 60s or whatever, probably. Um, but that's how the first gonna go is gonna get. But once you pick a date, um, that's it, buddy. You're locked in, and you can only pick dates that are greater than that date now. So. Even if this doesn't directly answer the person's question that asked it, um, I can say this. Uh, it, with a little bit of modification to this, you can make it to where it will fit your, uh, your question. And if it doesn't, you can still ask another question and I can tell you how to modify this to make it work. Anyways, enough chit chat. Let's get down to business. So first thing we do is we initialize these three global variables, the day, the month, the year, and set them to zero. Go okay, fine and dandy, simple enough. Um, then what we've got to do is we got to turn around and we got to do this. First of all, um, I do want to bring this up. If you imported the uh, clock element, it should be, which would be under sensors. Yeah, you imported the clock. You should be able to set the day, the month, and the year to these variables by default. And then you could make it to where you wouldn't even need this block of code at all so that's always an option as well but I added this in here just to make it to where you could pick any date just to whatever this is my own spin on things but that's a modification you could make anyways moving on from moving right along when you first pick the date picker the year the day and the month global variables are zero right I mean that's what we set them to so obviously we would expect them to be zero so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna say, well, we're gonna read whatever's in the day, month, and year buffers that the date picker selected. We're gonna store that information in the variable, and then we're gonna change this label to display that information, the month, the day, and the year. Simple enough. And I even make it in that nice little present format like you see it 
down here on this computer, 3, 12, 2015, or whatever. So pretty straightforward there. Um, that's the first thing. But now after that, we've got to handle event. We got to handle the event differently. So if they go ahead and they come back through the second time and they do it, what do we got to do? Well, first of all, we go through this list. Uh, this is going to be false the second time you go through because they're no longer zero. We just set them to a value. So obviously we can't do this no more. Um, but so we're going to go down here, obviously. If they selected a year, a day or a month that is greater than what they originally selected, guess what? We know the date is in the future, regardless of whatever happened. We know that it is in the future. So guess what? We're just going to go ahead and we're going to say day, month, and year all stored. Good to go. We're moving on. And then we're going to change the month, day, and the year. If they're all greater, we know that the date is greater. We don't have to do any other exceptions or anything like that. However, if that's not the case, um, we have to take into account other events. What if they pick the same um, or they pick a greater year, they pick a less date than what you have selected, and, but they also pick a month that is greater. Um, we have to be able to handle that. So basically now the date is going to be less. So the way we do that is with this and this cascading and statement that we have here, we say that get the, the, the years greater, the day is less, and the month is greater. That date is still greater than the current date we have selected. So we're still going to do that storage and and then uh, print that string out on the screen. But what if that's not the case? What if they did not select that? Well, okay, well, let's handle this. What if they picked the same year as what's currently stored? They picked a day that is greater, but they picked a month that is the same as the month that is stored. Well, guess what? We know that's a future date because they did that. So guess what? It's a future date. The month may be the same, the year may be the same, but they picked a day that was in the future. So guess what? We're going to go ahead and we're going to take care of that. And we're going to do the same thing. Print the date, month, the year, blah, 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 do all that. What if that's not the case though? Then we've got to handle another, yet another else if statement here. What if the year is greater, the day is equal, and the month is equal? So I could essentially um, more or less omit this, this part possibly, but I would rather have it in there just in case um, because if you do specify a condition, the day and the month do have to be equal. We don't want it to be set to other random values. We want it to be static no matter what. The day and the month have to be equal and the year has to be greater in order for the statement to be executed. So I did that just to be safe. And then that goes ahead and that happens. And then I also have down here with my other modification, if you pick the same day, the same month, and the same year, date cannot be equal to current date. Um, I just kind of do that by default. Um, that's just kind of what what happens there. But no big deal. Um, like I said, if you want to make it to where they can select the same date, you can just simply you know, destroy this else if statement by going up to that blue, oh, that was not what I wanted to do by going up to that blue square that's in the fifth thing and you just remove it. So you'd go down here. That's the bad thing about having all these long blocks like this. You'd go down here, you'd grab the else if statement, you'd drag it out and then you'd delete all of this stuff. If you And then you would go back up to the top and you would switch all of these to this statement. So every single one of those would get switched to that. And then that would handle and say, okay, if it's greater than or equal to then we're still going to display the month of the day. So that's modifiable however you choose to do it. And you could even add a database to this if you wanted to store the date information from the last time. I didn't. So anytime this app gets closed, you come back to it, the information is going to be erased. You're going to have to start over. But you could add a database and store information in a database for this application if you so choose. So, I mean, this is not meant to be a completed app. As always, this is just a piece that you could use in an app. So, and like I said, as, as with any of my tutorials that I ever do on YouTube, you are welcome to use all of the code and do whatever the heck you want to do with it. I'm not going to come after you. I'm not going to do anything like that. So, you guys are welcome to do with whatever with this code that you so desire. 
Um, if I get requests for any, if you have a request for uh, the source code for any previous tutorial, please I'll leave a comment or send me an email and tell me, hey, can I get the source code for X project that you showed us? Um, I could really use it to do something or whatever. More than happy to help you out. Um, so got no problems with all that stuff. Finally, though, um, the last thing that we have happen here is if you pick the date and this is the same, we're going to relaunch the picker and we're going to show an alert saying the date cannot be the same. Uh, same if the date is less than if all of these conditions fail and this doesn't execute, then that means the date that you picked it, picked was less. So the date cannot be less than current date. Simple enough. And you relaunch the picker. So essentially this closes the picker, this little branch here after picking. So we need to recall it in order to make the user choose a new day. So that's what we do here with the call launch picker called the, the date picker one launcher. So that's all there is to the application. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but at the same time, it was a little lengthy to piece all this together. And then you have to also think about all of the conditions that are possible with dates. But once you do that, you should have an effective working piece of application code. So as always, what I do with all of my tutorials, I would demonstrate that it does function the way I said it will function. So we pick a date. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick January 1st, 2011 for just whatever. I don't know why. I'm just going to do it. So I picked it. All right, cool enough. That date shows up. Um, now, if I go ahead, shouldn't have picked one maybe so far away, but I did. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, that's right. You can edit that. I forgot about that. But in the same respect now, let's say I pick 2010. It better not let me set that, and it doesn't. The date cannot be less than current date. And in the same respect, if I choose January 1st, 2011, and I hit set, it should say date cannot be equal to current date. That's that condition that we said before. You can easily omit that if you do want to allow the date to be set. But we're going to set it now to today's date. And lo and behold, it does set to today's date. If I turn around and I try to go back one day, sorry, not allowed. If I turn around and I try to go back to February, sorry, not allowed. If I turn around and I try to go back to 2014, Sorry, not allowed. Uh, if I try to go forward to 13, it better set, and it does. If I try to go forward to April, it better set, and it does. Try to go forward to April 12th, 2016, it better set, and it does. So, I mean, that's I think that's all the conditions. I may have missed possibly uh, one. I think that's that there's like seven of them or six of them or something like that. But that should cover every single condition. This app should work um fall asleep for all of that stuff feel free to modify it do whatever you need to do with it to, to make it do whatever you want to be able to do um as always uh please like comment subscribe leave you know feedback uh i'm open to other application suggestions i think my next app is pretty much planned out we're going to do stuff with the accelerometer and then i'm thinking after that we're going to head into fusion tables which is something that a lot of uh I have gotten uh, questions about with fusion tables. So we're going to start investigating fusion tables here uh, pretty quickly. But uh, anyways, that's all I have for you guys for this tutorial. And uh, one other thing, we did hit 300 subscribers on my channel. Actually, we have more than 300 subscribers. Thank you guys for all of your continued support that you've been giving me. Any, any support that you guys give me is is very much appreciated it's what keeps me motivated to continue putting these tutorials out there and uh, also having application suggestions from you guys does help too knowing what to do videos on or what people are interested in if i'm just blindly doing something it doesn't really do you guys a lot of good because i don't know on my end i don't know whether it's going to help you and then on your end i'm not necessarily maybe answering any questions uh, that you guys have and that's ultimately my purpose for all of these tutorials any tutorial that I do I'm always trying to answer a question and get feedback from you guys about what to you know how I could modify things or make things better so 
any anything is well appreciated. Thank you guys very much, and I will see you in your next App Inventor tutorial.